What I want to say to you today is that we're here to work with you. We have never gone to anybody. A foundation, I talked to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, this just among us friends, uh, a number of years ago. And they went to another organization with a multi-millions of dollars for a smokeless states program. And, I, and they wanted to review the program. They called me to talk to me and I said to them, <clears throat> It's, the program's doing good things, we're supportive, we're working with them, but you made a big mistake. You weren't the best stewards you could be of your resources. Because if you'd come to us, I wouldn't come in with my hand out. I would come in and say, the American Cancer Society is willing to commit this, if you'll commit that. And we actually did that with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation 15 years ago and it created the National Center for Tobacco Free Kids, a freestanding institution that has a huge impact on the reduction in smoking rates among children and youth. So think of us as an asset of how we can come together and make two plus two equal five or more, where we can leverage our assets and help people. And let me conclude by appealing to you that doing more for NCDs in general and cancer in particular in your workforce is a good business, business decision as well as the right moral choice. Not only can you look at reducing overhead costs, and over time controlling healthcare costs, and there's no one in the room that doesn't appreciate, many are more expert on that than I. But there's no question what that has to happen if we're going to be successful. But there's another more subtle thing, and that is how do we have the healthiest possible workforce and remain competitive in the world? And the truth is, aging is a global phenomenon. We're not just getting older in the Western world, the entire world is getting older. And medical science for many, many decades has been replete with halfway measures, meaning we're better at keeping people alive than we are keeping them well. And so uh, we don't really have a choice in this matter if we want to be competitive. We want the most productive workforce, and how do you get that? We've got to do more. As, as Richard said yesterday, it's a different paradigm than back here was to provide health insurance, and, and now we're talking about a healthy work environment and promoting health. So, so, so I, I would leave you with this thought. Um, and maybe I could draw the analogy of think of other things such as uh, world hunger, uh, poverty, terrorism. And ask yourself, <clears throat> how well do we understand the problem? And do we really know, do we really know if we intervene today in this way, we'll get this result? And do we really know what's going to happen if we don't intervene? And so I would just submit to you the following is that if we intervene, we now have, and I won't rattle off all of them, but we've got the first ever public health treaty in the history of the whole world, Framework Convention on Tobacco Control. If we implement that all over the world, and if we get companies to go completely tobacco free, et cetera, et cetera, we can change the world as we know it now. Not maybe. When I got started, it was, sounds like a good idea, will it work? We've got things now that have been proven to work. So we know what could happen if we do intervene, and that means bringing cancer under control earlier in this century than we otherwise would. But we also know what will happen if we don't. Because 20 years from now, we're all gonna be 20 years older. And if we're alive, we're either gonna be productive or disabled. And so it's a compelling case, I think, for us to find ways to work together better. The final point I would simply make, and we've spent a lot of time on this, and it's been educational for me, uh, but we learned some time ago that we can do good things, and we have, American Cancer Society, but if we still go it alone, We'll never have the impact we could have if we find ways to collaborate and partner with others. Now, uh, I went to a seminar 20 years ago and a person wrote collaboration up there and said, this is an unnatural human act. <laughs> so I, I, it isn't easy. It isn't easy. But, and we've got some wonderful collaborations. Some of them are in this very room and even partnerships. We're partnering with competitors. Live Strong is a competitor in a sense. We partner with them, especially on the issue of cancer survivorship because we know we can't do it all. They know they can't do it all. But I leave you with this following point. We cannot bring cancer under control in this century without direct engagement of the private sector. The government by itself, the NGOs or the, or the not-for-profit sector by itself, or even those two together, cannot bring cancer under control as early in this century as if we get the private sector involved. So let me conclude by thanking you and saying the following, and that is, is that the human being, someone said once, is the only animal that both laughs and cries, and that's because we somehow know the difference between what is and what ought to be. And you, as CEOs and who can establish the tone at the top and set the agenda, uh, can be very extraordinary individuals by changing what is into what could be. Thank you very much.